When was the last time you walked into a room filled with virgin girls? I mean, what's going on here? What are we talking about here? A room full of 13 and 14 year old girls? And are they wearing t-shirts like in a campy 1960s Batman TV episode labeled virgin? This is bizarre. A bizarre scene. Ten virgins. And they're, they're holding flashlights. More than that, five of the virgins were smart. They wanted to meet Frank Sinatra or Justin Bieber or whomever. And they weren't taking any chances. They had the wherewithal to go to the drugstore earlier in the day to buy some decent Energizer batteries, handfuls of them, judging by the way Jesus tells the story. They bought handfuls of Energizer batteries. The other five were stupid virgins. Is this where we insert a blonde joke or two? The other five virgins were stupid. They went out to meet Justin Bieber with the original cheapo Rayovac batteries already half used up from the slumber party the night before. And then, wouldn't you know it, Justin Bieber was delayed. Probably because he got busted with pot at the border for the sake of publicity or whatever. He was delayed. And everybody got tired. And everybody fell asleep. You know, when I heard that Pastor Andrew Abraham, my good friend, who baptized my newborn son not a few weeks ago, was sick and in the hospital... I became a little sick myself, anxious immediately for his family. Not ignoring him, of course. He had a severe and persistent headache that wouldn't respond to medicine, even the good stuff they dump into you at the emergency room. Thanks be to God, the neurologist has diagnosed the pain as just a migraine. Now, those of you who suffer from migraines might chafe at the word just a migraine, but yes, just a migraine, for we all instantly thought the worst. Brain tumor, or aneurysm, or some other awful medical condition. And that's our concern for him. And what about our concern for his family? A wife and three young boys, far away from their extended family, to endure with husband and father Andrew something horrible. Who would look after them? What, what kind of trouble would that cause? What if, perish the thought, what if he had been experiencing something fatal? What then? See, our Lord has gone away. Our bridegroom, our pop star, our Frank Sinatra, Justin Bieber. Jesus is making the return journey just as soon as the Father decides. And at midnight, the cry will come, He is here. Come out to meet Him. We grab our flashlights. Those of us who were wise will take with us our handfuls of Energizer batteries so that He will see us. Those of us who were stupid will have to make a midnight run to the drugstore to get some replacement batteries. But for them, it will be too late. The party will begin. The music will start playing. The food will be served. The wine will start pouring. And the door will be closed. I remember once when the four of us, my sisters and I, were very young. My dad got very ill. The whole house sort of stopped. I mean, Mom still still made food and got us off to school and life was ordinary that way. But the whole house stopped because of the anxiety that he might die from this fever he had contracted. The notion that dad was mortal was overwhelming both for mom and for us. Every thought of every day was consumed by the question of his survival. I do not remember once praying to Jesus for him. When you have worldly troubles, family, school, work, your energy is focused on worldly troubles. God is a jealous God. He wants you to focus on Him. Like Justin Bieber wants his fans focused on him, buying his music, not the music of some other. If you are not ready when Jesus returns, he will think that you are off with another lover. 
But Jesus is delayed. Worldly troubles are bound to come. It's not fair. No, it's not fair. The wise know it's not fair. The wise know that worldly troubles are bound to come and that we will, as it says, fall asleep. Our energy will be focused on worldly troubles. Therefore, the wise bring extra batteries for their flashlights. All these things have their various interpretations. The virgins, the lamps, trimming the wick, the oil. And you've probably heard interpretations different from mine, and they're probably better. But one thing we know for sure, the marriage feast is the end of the world, which Jesus brought ahead of time with him when he healed the sick, forgave sins, and died on the cross. We live in the time of Jesus, and he gives us everything we need to be ready when the delay is over. So for me, the batteries for the flashlights, that is, the oil for the lamps, has to be the sacrament of the altar. Fill it up again and again. Receive the body and blood, which strengthens and preserves you in the faith to life everlasting. That's got to be what it means to keep extra oil for your lamp. Communion. I guess more than that, regular participation in the body of Christ. You know, going to church on a regular basis. And look, here you are. And look, here's the Lord's Supper. How convenient. Is your conscience eased? Do you feel better? This is how God works. He lays a burden upon you, and then he lifts the burden and puts it on the cross. What did you do? Not much, right? What do you have to do to be ready for the return of Jesus? What do you have to do to keep your energy focused on your jealous God? What do you have to do to be considered a wise virgin? Exactly what you're doing. Sitting passively, listening, receiving, and keeping watch.